Good morning, guys. I'm back today for chapter five and chapter six of What Was Pearl Harbor? Chapter five. This is no drill. A quiet calm lay over Pearl Harbor that Sunday morning. Many sailors were sleeping in late. Many others were chowing down in the mess halls. Some were headed ashore for their day off. The huge battleships lay peaceful at anchor, waves lapping gently at their giant hulls. Then fighter planes, thick as hornets, darkened the sky. Yet few people were worried, at least at first. They figured that U.S. pilots were on a practice drill or putting on an air show. Even the sight of bombs did not alarm one admiral. What a stupid, careless pilot, he said to himself when he saw a bomb drop from the plane. He, too, was sure that this was only a drill. Another officer thought a pilot was showing off when his plane swooped in very low. He looked for the reckless pilot's number and saw instead a red ball on the plane's wing. It was the symbol of Japan. At home, Admiral Kimmel had just put on his starched white uniform when he heard a distant bomb. Running outside, he saw pillars of smoke and fire rising from Pearl Harbor. Overhead, flocks of airplanes streaked by. Kimmel took one look at the red dots on their wings and the awful truth became clear. The Japanese were attacking. The admiral turned as white as his uniform, said a neighbor. Kimmel dashed off to send the alarm. This is not a drill. Man your stations. In the harbor, loudspeakers on the U.S. warships blared. Real planes, real bombs. On every deck, sailors yelled to their mates, Japanese attack. This is not a drill, real planes, real bombs. Japanese planes stormed in first, screaming low over the harbor. They let loose deadly torpedoes that shot through the water like sea monsters. Under the, underwater, the warheads went straight towards the hulls of the big ships. One after another, the U.S. ships reeled under attack. The ships seemed to explode in a chain reaction, said one eyewitness. A day that started very quiet and calm had become a nightmare. Japanese attack planes. The Japanese had different war planes to do different jobs. Fighter planes were nicknamed Zeros. They could dive low to the ground firing machine guns located in their wings. Zeros could veer and turn with dizzying speed. None of the U.S. planes at that time could move with the speed and ease of the Zeros. Dive bombers, often called vowels, carried bombs under both wings and one huge bomb on their underside. They could swoop in low and hit their targets with true aim. High altitude bombers, called Kates, dropped 1,700 pound bombs from high in the sky. The bombs gathered force as they plunged to earth. Other Kates dropped the special torpedoes that had been made for Pearl Harbor's shallow waters. Chapter 6, 15 Minutes of Terror The attack began at 7.55. The next 15 minutes were the most deadly. On board the U.S. ships, chaos ruled. Bombs killed many sailors instantly. The wounded struggled to get, to get to battle stations and fight back. They raced over decks slick with blood and oil. Water gushed into gaping holes in the, sh in the ships. On lower decks, men were trapped in flooded rooms. In only 15 minutes, the Japanese managed to carry out most of the destruction at Pearl Harbor. It was 8.05 when the Oklahoma on Battleship Road took the first seven torpedoes. With gashes on, it, on its side, the ship was thrown into pitch blackness. Sea water poured in and the Oklahoma began to sink. Seamen were trapped below in the darkness. I was tossed and spun around, pitched into a great nothingness, said one survivor. All of us, the living, dying, and the dead, were whirling around together. Slowly, sickeningly, the Oklahoma began to roll over on her side, said a witness. 
Within minutes, only its rounded hull showed above the water. It looked like a huge dead whale. The Oklahoma hit the bottom of the harbor just eight minutes after the first torpedo strike. 400 men died aboard the ship. At the same time, a torpedo blasted directly underneath the West Virginia and sent the crew flying. The huge warship began to topple at once. Two more torpedoes capsized, capsized the Utah. Another split open the hull of a smaller ship called the Agalala, which would capsize two hours later. It was awful. Great ships were dying before my eyes, said an eyewitness. As U.S. ships were exploding, so, so were U.S. planes. Japanese bomber planes attacked nearby airfields with fury. Their goal was to destroy planes on the ground before American pilots could get in the air and fight back. The first air-based attack were Hickam, Wheeler, Bellows, and Ua. The planes at each were lined up close together, wingtip to wingtip. They had been parked together out in the open so they could be easily guarded from spies. Tragically, they were now wide open to attack. In the first 15 minutes of the attack at Ua, 33 of the 49 planes on the field were destroyed with the remaining 16 too damaged to fly. Nearby at Wheeler, Bombers killed hundreds of soldiers in their barracks, many of them still sleeping. In Hickam, a bomb took out dozens of planes in one shattering blast. Dive bombers were tearing the place to pieces, a witness said. But the worst was yet to come, and the mighty Arizona battleship would be the target. The huge USS Arizona was home to 1,500 officers and sailors. Living there was more like living in a city than on a ship. Its giant hull was 600 feet long. Thick armor covered the top decks of the ship. Heavy weapons and highly trained crews protected it. Ammunition was stored in a hold below decks. For the first several minutes of the attack, the Arizona was able to withstand the torpedoes hit the torpedoes hit. At 8.10, her mast still stood tall. Then a bomb came hurling down from 10,000 feet overhead. It pierced the Arizona's thick armor, blasting through its decks, and blew up the hold where all the ammunition was stored. More than 1 million pounds of gunpowder exploded in a towering fireball. In that single moment, over 1,000 men on the Arizona were killed. Stun witnesses saw fire shooting 500 feet into the air. Bodies flew in the sky. The Arizona itself bol bolted several feet off the water. Then it simply broke in two. Shock waves shuddered through the entire island, tossing dozens of men overboard onto nearby ships. Parts of the Arizona rained down all over the island. Within minutes, the great Arizona sank to the bottom of the harbor. There, it still lies. The bodies of the dead were never recovered. Many of the victims from the Arizona were brothers. 37 sets of brothers had been serving together on the ship. Only one set of brothers survived. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States tried to never assign brothers to the same ship. The USS Arizona. Before the attack, one sailor on the Arizona wrote home saying, well, mother, a battleship is about as safe a vessel as you can find in a fleet, so you don't have to worry. Giant guns were mounted around the sides of the Arizona. It took 16 men to work each one. The 50-foot barrels spewed out warheads that weighed as much as 1,500 pounds and that could hit ships 20 miles away. The Arizona's crew, the Arizona crews were prepared for a battle at sea, but the Pearl Harbor attack came from the air. Most of the huge guns on the Arizona never had a chance to fire. 
Nearly half of all those who died at Pearl Harbor died on the Arizona. Check back with me on Monday, guys. Just as you need to take the weekend to rest and recuperate, I'm going to take the same. We will read chapter 7, 8, and 9 on Monday. Have a good weekend.